Aaron here, back with the Retro Header Build-Off. I just finished mocking up all the primaries in the first two episodes. So in this episode, we're gonna continue on from where our collectors are because this is a four to one design. And we're gonna be doing two larger diameter tubing down to a single collector at the end of the header. So to do that, I gotta get this car back up on the hoist and it'll be a lot easier to mock up everything from underneath the car. Let's get started. We've got the top half of our header complete. I've finished the last runner into the second collector here. Uh, now I'm gonna put this back in the car, test fit it, make sure everything is good, clearance is good. I'm happy with where my outlets are pointing and then I'm gonna continue on with the lower half of the header. Um, so let's get this put back in the car. We've got our two uh, outlets of our collectors pointed in the direction we want to come down over the steering rack here and then tuck underneath the bottom of the car next to the transmission here. And we want our other two into one collector to sit somewhere, somewhere in this general area. So I need to have those two pipes come bend down and flow into that. So I'm just gonna take a UJ bend that matches my outlet on my collectors. I just kind of throw it in there and see what that looks like. So that's if it were exactly straight. So obviously that's not going to work, right? But it gives me an idea of the direction that it's pointing. And because I want, I want to bend it this way, I'm going to turn it sideways where that 45 is. What I'll do is I'll cut this on this side, how much I think I need to keep that shorter because this is too long, right? But I want to keep this long leg so I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter so it tucks up higher, but it keeps this nice and long. So it's gonna come down here nice and far, and then I can put a shorter bend here if I have to. Holy man, I can cut stuff really fast. That is the piece that I cut. So that's the full length of the leg off of the 45. <laughs> and that's, that would have been the 180 there, right? That's about where I want it. So I'm gonna end up having to cut this leg a little bit shorter and then have it bend underneath the car. So I've marked this already. Uh, I've placed that up there and marked it with a marker. I just need to pull that collector off and then I can tack weld this and test fit it again. about where we want that. So now we can continue with the, uh, the next one. So now I'm, I've got another UJ and I wanna run a parallel bend to that. So I'm just kinda holding it up to get an idea of what's gonna look like. I actually want it to run a little bit longer cause I want it to come in behind to maintain better ground clearance under here. Cause if I run it on top, like right beside it, it'll be somewhere around there, but I want it like up here. It's close here, but I've got room here, so I can cut that end a little bit shorter and it'll, it'll pull it back that way a little bit. So I'm just trying to line that up, right? So that it comes out that way. So it's too long and there's, there's no clearance there, right? And I wanna keep it tucked up that way like that. So if I cut this end shorter, I have, a, I have a nice big gap in here so I can close that gap up by cutting that shorter, but it'll also allow me to hopefully turn it up just slightly a little bit more and gain a little clearance here. So I wanna, I wanna twist it up a bit, but if I do, it's gonna get tighter there. But if I cut it shorter, it'll bring that back a bit and it'll, I want this outlet to be about there like that. But I would like to, to keep this tighter here maybe, so I may just. I think that's a little close to the, 
to what I'm looking for. So I've got better clearance in here now, right? Through here, and then... Uh, and then you mean up top there, right? Yeah, like you can see, there's nice clearance through here that kind of matches this one here, right? So I'll deburr that in, and then I'll mark it, and then I'll pull that collector off, tack weld that together, and then continue bringing them both down this way. There we go. So these are gonna get trimmed like up here. There'll be a little bit of radius that's gonna come in the bend that's gonna straighten it out back that way, right? So they're both gonna turn into this. Actually, this is gonna be further back here like this. Beauty Academy guys are here at the shop again. And uh, as always, they're up to no good. What you guys doing there? We're having a nap under Connie. Yeah. Nice. Just thought we'd chill out down here on the floor. So Jay's working on the header today. So let's uh, take a peek and look at their progress. I mean, me, I took a little sneak peek to see what these guys are up to. This is where they're at. Oh! Uh, that's money. So Dave, are you, uh, are you happy with your header right now? Let me put it to you this way. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yeah, of course I'm happy. I'm getting a sexy header built, and all I have to do is stand around and make bad jokes, make dad jokes, and a, <laughs> and a header appears. Like, who wouldn't be happy about that? It's gonna be nice, man. It's, it's I love this sort of uh, swooped primary look. It's a cool look, and it should make some power too. More power than yours will make anyway. Obviously. Oh, yeah, we'll see about that. A little sewing machine engine in there. Just to point out, you had to change your engine. I did change my engine. I didn't have to because what I had is good. Engineered. I never get any work done with all this talking around my work area. It's very frustrating. It is. Yes, we're gonna go away now. the off cut from my UJ bend, two inch. I cut the 45s off of two of these to make these first part of this section here. So now I'm gonna pull this one out. I'm gonna use this leftover piece to create the bend that comes down and goes straight. Let's get busy. So now I wanna just kind of eyeball where that bend is gonna have to be cut. I'm not worried about the, the angle up and down on it, I can, that'll be determined when, uh, after I cut it, depending on how much I, I rotate it like this, right? Once it, it's made it up to that piece. But what I wanna do is hold this relatively straight and eyeball it along so that it, my, my straight part of this leg here is tangent to my bend here, right? So if I've got it too far up like that, I'd be cutting it at the wrong angle. So if I bring it back this way, maybe cut a little bit extra. It's easier to make a second cut and remove material than to have to scrap the piece and start over because you cut too much off it. So I'm gonna make this cut now and then I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna mark where this cut is, where it's gonna match up on this straight leg here. I'll take this off, cut it, and then bring it back, test fit it, see how it looks and then hopefully tack weld it together. A few inches later. It is a little bit long there, but this is gonna give me an indication as to how far up this leg I need to make my, my cut on that piece. So I want it, I need also need to keep in mind that I'm just eyeballing this, so once it's cut, it's gonna be kind of like that, right? Obviously I need to take material off of this leg. So I can do it one of two ways. I can kind of eyeball it this way and then it's going to be sitting in that somewhere general vicinity or I can just hold it down here it's a, it's pointing a little bit lower than what I want but I can estimate 
how far up I need to bring this section here because I want it to sit up here, right? So say that distance is two inches. I'm going to transfer that onto this straight section here and I'm going to cut two inches off it. It's nice these slip fits because you can just pop these in and out pretty easy and not have to bolt anything together or fight with V-bands or anything. And they're nice low profile. So that's getting closer. I might cut, I gotta cut a little bit more off of this radius. You can see here that it's pointing a little bit towards the passenger side of the car. I wanna straighten that out. So there's tack welds at the other end of the 45. If I need to turn this down a little bit more, I'll just break those tack welds, turn it down, and then continue on. I'm trying to visualize where I want this pipe to be, right? I want this pipe to be somewhere in around here, right? I want it to live about there. So right now, it's below that, right? It's, it's because this leg is straight, right? As I cut material off of this leg, it's gonna pull it up and up towards the other bend, right? Mm -hmm. In that direction. So you need to keep that in mind as you're removing material from this. If you remove too much, it's gonna pull it too far and then I, I won't have room for the second pipe because I'm gonna have another pipe running parallel next to this, right? From the other runner. A few moments later. Collector piece back on. And then I'm gonna hold both pieces together because I'm gonna turn this down a little bit just slightly, but I wanna make sure that, see that's turned down quite a bit more. So if I turn it up, right? And then that means I need to turn that up again as well. Yeah, that's pretty close there. So I'm gonna deburr these and then mark them and tack them and uh, see what we can come up with. Let's test fit this bad boy. So that's aimed a little down. I'm gonna break this apart again and I'm gonna redo this tack weld here so it pulls it up just slightly. Cause I'm not happy with this downward angle. I want it more parallel to the ground. It'll bring it up a little bit tighter to that, but we can put a, a heat shield there. So instead of going back to the bench and taking this all apart, I'm gonna do this one a little differently. I'm gonna actually have access to uh, both my tack welds. So I'm gonna just break one tack weld with my torch and then that'll allow me to, to pull that part off and then I'm gonna realign it where I want it to be pointing a little bit higher up and then I'm gonna just retack it quickly. So I've broken one tack and it's still kind of hanging on the other tack. The other tack's pretty small so it's gonna eventually just fall off. So now I wanna it was pointing kind of down like that. I want to aim it up just a little bit higher right there. I'm going to tack this again. And I'm going to go over exactly the same tack I just had because there's a little bit of filler there and it should be enough material to drag across the joint. And then on the other side, I'm gonna have to add some filler. But that should hold there for a second. Because it's on the top, it's not the bottom. One more little tack here. Now that's more parallel. That's the angle I really want. That's the position I want. I'm gonna pop my other pipe in there. I'll probably have to cut it shorter because the leg would, is going to interfere with this because it comes down through here, it's going to hit that. So I'll try and cut it to match this length here and then I'll cut my other piece and continue on. Look at that, eh? So I'm going to need to cut this one back probably up around here somewhere, but I'm going to follow the same process that I did for that. Just gonna mark where I want this bend. Same idea. So, somewhere around there. 
I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to cut on this side of my mark, leave a little bit of extra material. That way I have a little bit of play uh, if, if I'm off with uh, how good my eyes are. A few inches later. So now I'm going to start cutting this leg back till I get this position and I ideally I want it positioned so that it's going to be almost parallel with that one. So now I've made that cut and I can measure that up again. So that's a little bit low, you can see, but it's headed in the right direction. But now I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna finish this cut so that it's parallel with, with this piece here. And then I'll finalize that other cut. Is this manifold going to be more awesome than the it's CR going to be more awesome CRX than the, manifold? Uh, well, it's yeah, that's, it that, is. that's comparing apples to oranges because that's Schedule 10 piping and it's a turbo manifold, and this is a naturally aspirated 16 gauge tube manifold. Okay. This is a lot more work than that that manifold. Oh, definitely. That's I'm ha I'm happy with that. I might when I deburr this. Um, I can see that it's, oh no, that's pretty good. Let's deburr these, put this back together, and uh, mark it and tack it. And we're almost done this header for tack up. But there's also some top secret stuff we want to add to it. The header is almost as big as you are. She's a long tube. She's a very long tube. Boy, that's awesome. Boy, that's long. This is all one header. We're not even done. We're not even done. Look at how ginormously sexy that is. Looks like the Speed Academy guys had nothing else better to do. Well, they do stand around and watch Jay do all the work. Flashback. All I have to do is stand around and make bad jokes. End of flashback. Yeah, well. <laughs> and draw stickers on my car. As you guys saw, my header is now a musical instrument that just wants to scream. However, all it needs is some final welds. So Aaron will take care of that on the next episode. Also, the Speed Academy guys did violate my car, and I have to figure out a way to get back at them at the next episode. Until then, check out the Speed Academy channel and see what they're up to and what they've been doing. Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.